going to be pasted on. Okay, so that's the purpose of flow along surface. Now, uh, I would request you to try this on finish pavilion that we did the other day, where we wanted to make those holes onto the surface following the same pattern that you have on the original. So let's say, let's not follow the entire pattern as is because it's obviously done in a more advanced way than just making those circles by hand. It's, it is following a certain, uh, uh, a certain um, algorithm, which, which we can obviously deal with in, in one of our next, uh, uh, in the next webinar series that we have. So that is a whole different ball game, but what we will try to do is, okay, fine. Let's just make some holes on the flattened surface on the smashed surface and then take it back on and then we just split and delete or we do some boolean operations and remove okay so you guys can try this follow the same process that we did here uh, for the tower while the whole thing was laid down and then do the same thing here just to give you a little taste i'll show you how this thing will look when it's smashed because this is one single object and it already has some different surfaces which are gluing to each other so i'm just going to say smash on the surface and enter to continue okay uh it's asking shall i explode it we would say yes because if we don't explode it all the surfaces are going to intersect into each other and it's going to be a mess so i'm going to say yes explode and this is what we get so this is let's say the top surface, the bottom surface, probably this is the surface which is inside. And this is the surface that we want. So probably you could just trash all of them. And you would then use this surface and you would obviously perform the same uh, kind of operations that we did on the on the tower, you would extract the ISO curve, probably make some divisions make some lines uh, sorry make some circles and then just array them uh, array them along the curve so that they follow the same geometry they, they follow the same uh, motion and then you just flow it along onto the surface okay so that's uh, something for you guys to try it's like a little homework which you can validate and check for yourself and you can follow the same process to do any kind of facades the only thing is you'll have to make the pattern yourself and you have to understand how the whole geometry is going to connect into each other when you have the seams matching also keep in mind that it works for smooth geometries in a very smooth way if you have some distorted geometry like we had before you better fix it and then uh, do operations such as flow along surface Flow along surface works only for one tiny surface. It might be connected in a different way when it goes to your parent surface, but it's not going to be uh, uh, in a similar fashion when you have it uh, smashed. You could probably say explode and then you have all the bits and you might orient them, but it's still going to be a mess. So always try to have surfaces which don't have any kinks which are not split at tangents, which do not have a lot of control points that you can't deal with and which are generally smooth and healthy. And then it's going to be much more easier to make these kind of uh, operations on them. So things that we saw today were twist, bend, extractions, uh, contour, uh, flow along surface. So now I think you have uh, um, some major tools from Rhino in your arsenal and you can just um, sort of try to design directly into Rhino on the fly if you can, depending on the constraints that you have in your mind, or you can just look at a geometry, try to understand how it's actually made and then try to uh, imitate it or try to model it by uh, just understanding the geometry, just understanding the shape, the morphology of it. Okay. As an ending note, I would just, uh, I'm just going to show you something. 
on extracting images from Rhino, the, the best way that we saw already is by uh, hyphen view capture to file, which lets you adjust the pixel ratio and uh, everything so that you can use it in any other software. But to uh, get something like an, uh, an animated GIF or something going, which is what we want at the end of the challenge, you would like to follow the process that I'm going to show you now. Uh, I will show the same. I will show you the process on the on the Danish pavilion that we did uh, in the last session because I have already gone ahead and put uh, the entire process into different layers. So I am just going to trash this. Maybe yeah, change object layer. Okay, and I'm going to use the entire process here. So just to give you a summary, this is how we started. We made a circle. We copied it. And then we made a reference line, which is red here for some reason. Okay, I'm just gonna change the color. Uh, let's keep it blue. Okay, a different blue. Yeah, sorry, OCD. Uh, then we just trimmed it, trimmed the whole thing. So after trimming the whole thing, it looked something like this that you see here. Maybe I'll just go into the Arctic view, much better. Yeah, this is how it looked after trimming. Then we said, well, we will have to move it because they are not in the same uh, uh, plane. Then we did a blend curve on them where we got the uh, the edges of the Mobius strip. And then we joined the whole thing. And then we used sweep. And then we used extrude surface. Okay, so these are all the steps. Now I have put them into their layers because that's how it's going to help me in making the uh, the process renders or the process documentation because I need to see where the process, where one part of the process starts and the other uh, and, and it ends and so on and so forth. And the sequence as well because I've gone on and put little numbers on them so that, you know, they arrange themselves accordingly and such. Another thing to note here is uh, you might mm, get into the entire model and you zoom in, zoom out, and you do a lot of stuff. And you sometimes like a certain angle for, for your model. And you have to go back to that angle again, and you have to find it again. So to do all of that, the easiest step to do is to go to named views and to save the view that you want. So the moment you save a view, it asks you if you want to give it a name. So, okay, I'm going to say zero two. And then the view is remembered, it's saved by Rhino. So even if you just mess up somewhere, you can just double click and you go back to the view. Like this one that I already saved. Okay. Uh, so keeping this in mind, keeping the, the named views on and saving a view, we are now going to see how this entire geometry looks when it's, it is, you know, it's rotated. How does it look from all the angles? The quickest uh, tool to use in Rhino is to use turntable, which is basically a turntable. It's going to rotate your model. You can adjust the speed from here and you can escape at any time and it just stops turning at that point. You close or hit escape, it just does the same thing. So, okay, so now we understand what the turntable is and what the named views are. Now let's just merge these two concepts into uh, extracting images while the model is being turned, but the camera is at the same location, okay? So this is like a combination of the things that we saw now. So the view is saved and the turntable is on. Let's go to the render tools uh, a ribbon on Rhino, like you see here, there is a little button which says animation setup. Okay. So these are different animation setups where you are going to say, what kind of camera do you want? You know, one day sun study or fly through animation, path animation or turntable animation. This is the one that we are going to use. So I'm going to say, Turntable animation. So this is the one which is going to help me set up the animation. 
Now it has several inputs in the dialog box. The number of frames. I'm going to say, okay, let's keep it small. Let's keep less frames. So it's going to be slightly tacky, but it's going to be faster. So I say five frames direction clockwise, anti-clockwise, whatever you want. File type, whatever you feel most comfortable with. I would prefer to go with PNGs. Then capture method, which view you want to be extracted in, which is very, very powerful because you could probably put a rendered view or ray traced and it would give you rendered images, but it will take a hell lot of time. So probably I would suggest you to do the rendered effect in something like a key shot, but not here in Rhino. But yeah, you can go with something like the Arctic where we have set up the view already, uh, set up the display options already. Now it's asking you which viewport you want. A zero one, top, front. So I'm going to say zero one because zero one is the one that we have saved before. Remember the named view that we have saved, zero one. And it's going to ask you what name do you want for the animation? So this is layer number, oops, sorry. This is layer number nine. So we're going to give it the name as nine. 09 is what it's called. So I'm going to hit OK. And now the setup is done. Now you want to extract it. So to extract, let's first go to the, the named view. There we have. OK, this is the one. I'm just going to go to the Arctic. And now I'm going to say record animation. The moment you say record animation, it asks you which is the target folder. So I've already made a target folder on my desktop. It says GIF and I'm going to say, okay. Do you want to run the animation when it's done? I'm saying, no, please just give me the snapshots and save them, whatever. And that's it. So I'm just going to hit okay. And it does the whole process. Okay, so it's done. Let's see. Yeah, this is the GIF folder. And oops, it opened directly in Photoshop. Sorry. Uh, where is it? Yes. So this is the extracted output that I get. And I could do this for all the layers, obviously. And then I would use a software such as, let's say, Photoshop and use the timeline uh, window to get a GIF out of it. Okay. So well, that is for you to figure out how to make a GIF, but this is how you will extract images from Rhino. You can put them, even you can find some, uh, online portals to make GIFs and you can sequence the images in, in a way that you want and prepare a documentation of how, how the little geometry was made, how, which process was followed and how the sequence was taken care of. As a sample uh, for the challenge, we would be posting a sample GIF for the same uh, for the same model actually for the Danish pavilion, so that it can give you a slightly clearer idea of what kind of image resolutions we are looking at, what kind of GIF quality we are looking at. We don't want something really fancy, but something that is explanatory which talks about which command was used and how a certain change was made. You could add uh, the, the basic is for the six steps that we have spoken of for the challenge, but you could go on ahead and you could uh, also uh, have some details for each one of these steps. And then you can have a grand GIF or something at the end. So it's the choice is absolutely yours, but that's how the challenge is going to be documented. This is one thing. And the other thing is you would just have a nice grand render or just an Arctic or whatever pen view or anything should be fine, but should be self explanatory of what you have done. Okay. Like for example, in this one, it's just an Arctic view and little bit of Photoshop, which explains that, um, cell phone is converted into a stadium but you can go with a bird's eye view or a worm's eye view or whatever. 
so that's about the challenge and i hope uh, everything was conveyed um, to you in the right way you have understood i believe most of the things and if you have any doubts you know how to contact me you can check out with the moderators and ask me any questions even after uh, the videos the recordings of this are saved and they will also be probably accessible to you uh, you can again contact the moderators uh, to access them uh, after this uh, webinar we have another the next stage of the webinar is the uh, uh, permutable morphologies which talks about uh, using uh, visual programming in your workflow so now that you have understood how the process of starting with a single circle converts it into uh, something that is a very complex shape you have understood the process and you can document it you can replicate it you can slightly change it modify it do whatever you want uh but that is going to be much more powerful in a software such as grasshopper where we are going to learn some core concepts of grasshopper and then we will uh, have some examples where we will see uh, fascinating different uh, plugins for grasshopper which some of them give uh, physics simulations some of them help you in uh, uh, looping some of them help you in paneling so uh, uh, there is a whole different world of programming that is connected to making geometry and modeling so that is what we're going to see in the permutable morphologies webinar uh, for the dates for the registrations just go to the website and uh, that will help you out in a more um, uh, in a more definite way okay so uh thank you very much for listening and uh let's see how you uh face the challenge that is there in front of you i'm really excited to see what kind of uh, shapes you're going to model and uh, what architectural uses they are going to be uh, taken for uh so yes i'm looking forward to all these uh different uh solutions that you might have Okay. So uh, again, thank you very much for listening and that's it for the entire series.